Hey y'all, it's Super Dave, and I have here with me a 2018 BMW 330e. Now I am getting, I have a check engine light on, and I also have check drive chain message coming up on my display. Now to check my codes today, I'm going to be using uh, this scan tool. I'm going to put in a link in the description. This one here is made for BMW only. And the cost that I got was around $120 on Amazon. I will be putting a link in the description. So I'm in the car now. If uh, I go to click to start it. I have the check engine light on. Actually, I have two messages up here, and the reason I have two is because it's low on fuel right now, but if you hit that triangle there, if you hit this triangle, it's going to come up. Drivetrain check soon. Now, it is still working in hybrid mode, but I noticed yesterday when I was driving, it stopped working altogether. And this first started out with just this message coming on. The check engine light was not on. And I was getting a message for the starter pinion timeout code. I had two different codes for the starter. So I'm figuring, oh, maybe it's the starter. But if you have this, that does not mean it is the starter because after that, the check engine light comes on and the codes I have now, I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna take our scan tool and we're gonna hook it up. Uh, the hookup, the OBD2 hookup is on the left side of the, below the dash on the left side. Right here up under the left side, it's very hard to see, but it is right there. Okay, now I've got it plugged in. So you're just gonna hit this button. You're not gonna push on the brake. You're just going to hit that one time. It's gonna come in accessory mode. So you're gonna come here and you wanna go to BMW. On, actually, it's not touch screen, but you're gonna use the arrows here. You're gonna go to BMW. And I am going, there's all the different series BMWs, three series, go to your year model. This is an F30. I'm gonna go to the basic functions. Now I'm not gonna scan the whole system because there's like 22 different computers on here. I'm just gonna go to manual select. I'm gonna do the engine control module. And we're going to read the fault codes. Now, it shows I have four fault codes. This first one here is the uh, 2A508. It's start system, pinion starter, timeout successively occurred multiple times. And then our second code is all for, also for the starter. It's a... 21A511 start system pinion starter timeout and then here I have another code it's a 218 217 starter unit charging controller for auxiliary battery auxiliary battery fault and then another one here for 218 312 starter unit charging controller for auxiliary battery voltage Sensor 2, operating range too low. So, it's got all these kit codes here with the starter pinion and all that, but it's not going to be your starter. The problem is the auxiliary battery. Now, if you go all the way back here, and you want to look at, go to the special functions here, you go down to battery management and evaluate battery charge state. 
So it's gonna tell you when your battery was replaced last year. That's what this is. But this is the auxiliary battery here, this one. And it shows you charge status, histogram, time with charge status, and value range. So it has been operating in between 20 and 40% of the time for 1200 and something hours. 40 to 60 was 700 and something hours. So it's the, the auxiliary battery needs to be replaced because it's just not efficient anymore. The voltage is not keeping the voltage on the battery. Now, the only place to get this battery that I found in the US is at Advanced Auto Parts as far as getting an aftermarket battery. They're the only one who has it. But if you call them and you put your vehicle or you tell them what vehicle you have, they're not gonna find the battery. So I'm gonna put a link in the description. It's gonna take you straight to the battery, direct replacement, and it just says EV. It's, it's a hybrid battery for a hybrid vehicle. This battery is going to work for your vehicle which I'll be stopping by there today to buy my battery. And I'm gonna show you here how you can replace it. Okay, now the auxiliary batter, battery is under the hood on the driver's side. This is the US model. And you just got four torque screws. Of course, this cover here, it just pops right off so you can get to these other ones here. So we're gonna take those off. The auxiliary battery is there. But before we do this, of course, we're going to have to go to the trunk, disconnect the 12 volt battery back there and disconnect the hybrid battery. All right, now I have off the cover and here is that auxiliary battery. I actually can hear it. And it actually sounds like it's actually boiling. So, I do not believe that is normal. So we're gonna go in the trunk, disconnect the, the regular battery and the hybrid battery now, just for safety. I'm sure I could just replace this without doing that. But since you wanna be on the safe side, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Also what I'm gonna do is I am going to pull these latches here. So the back seat, I can get in through the trunk just in case, because if I have no battery power and my trunk is closed, I will not be able to get back here to reconnect the battery over here. And then this latch here, this you can get in through the back seat, pull this and the trunk will open. So you're simply going to move this out of the way. And there is our battery there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the negative on it. And then for our hybrid battery here, it's got this deal here. And on this here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this little tab out. And then this whole thing is gonna slide. It's gonna disconnect the hybrid battery. Okay, now this little tab, this red tab, it's just gonna pull out all the way and this whole thing is going to slide out like that. Now we're gonna disconnect the uh, negative side on the battery over here and that's gonna be a 10 millimeter. You're gonna want to get to disconnect that. Now I'm simply just using this 10 millimeter with this that's here. It's the regular socket, 10 millimeter, quarter inch ratchet here and there it is came right off now we can go replace the auxiliary battery okay back on the auxiliary battery you're going to want to disconnect this uh, little line here let's go ahead and disconnect the negative first Wiggle the negative off 
and you're probably gonna want to have to take off this because you're not gonna be able to get this this out of the way with this little wire on here so you're actually gonna have to take off take off this uh, this little wire here now this is all 10 millimeter I'm using the same tool to do all these things here so take that off out of the way and then I want to loosen up this until it's loose enough that you can wiggle that off but this is not the only thing we have to do now down below I know there is which you may have to remove, remove this little fuse box here. I'm gonna try to do it without it, but there is, I believe a 13 millimeter down there. Down here, they're just take a little flat head, take a flat head screwdriver. You can uh, pop those out. And if you, after you pop those out, this, uh, pop off fairly easy here you can use uh, some needle nose to grab them if you need to it's able to fit my fingers down in there and get them but that will allow you this whole thing to actually move over and you're going to need that to move over because right there is that uh, 13 millimeter bolt that's uh, holding this auxiliary battery in so we've got our uh, 13 millimeter here. I'll take this off. I was able to fit it in between there and get access around that little fuse box and those wires there. Now you can move this little fuse box, stick a screwdriver, and just pry against the end there, and it does pop out of the way. So we have to take that little bracket out there with the bolt on it. Now remember where this goes, it goes right back up in here. It's only one place it can go, but there it is. We're gonna pull out that bracket with the bolt. Now all I did was uh, stuck my screwdriver in the little hole, kind of push it in there and pulled up and the whole bracket came out. Now you're gonna find the battery still does not wanna come out. So you're gonna have to go over here. Now there is a tab there's a tab down here and you're gonna slide the tab towards the engine. It's on the opposite side of the bolt. There's another little hole there. There's a tab on this side. You're gonna slide it that way towards the engine. So it'll release this side of the battery so we can get it out. Now you may find it easier just to go ahead and pop this out of the side with a screwdriver and then here it can able to reach the battery and pull it out easier. All right, battery's out. So you had this tab here, this whole thing. When you slide it back, it just moves out of the way. You're gonna have to shake it when you grab it, pull it kind of hard, it's a little heavy. And then the battery will come right out. Now this battery, is made i believe by varta you're not going to find this battery here in the u.s uh, you may be able to find it at the bmw dealer and i'm not sure about the cost but in advanced auto parts the equivalent battery is a die hard which i'll be putting in a link in the description <clears throat> and it's going to take you straight to that battery so you can call them up and you can get your batteries i believe it's 250 dollars uh, plus tax now I'm going to take the battery into advanced saddle parts, but I did leave the doors unlocked and you saw in order for me to get to the trunk, I did, I did release the trunk release to rear seats so I can get in through the back seats if I have to, which I probably will to pull the trunk to reconnect the battery in the back. Okay, now I've picked up the battery from Advanced Auto Parts, and this is here. It's a die-hard EV here. It's uh, 420 cold cranking amps, 60 reserve capacity, 
40 amp hours and there it is there this is the only aftermarket battery that you're going to find uh, for this BMW so now I'm going to install it pretty much in reverse order uh, that I took it out so it goes here just like this and this little line here of course you're gonna hook it back up over there it's got a little hole there for it that's to uh, I guess bin off the gases from this so uh, now let's get it back together now there is a short bolt and a long bolt and of course the short bolt is gonna go on this right side there and the long one is gonna go over there okay now that I've ever got everything back in place everything's nice and tight we're just going to uh, put the cover on and then we're gonna go back to the battery in the trunk which we're gonna have to go to the back seats to open the trunk and then we're going to put the negative cable back on the on the battery in the truck and then we're going to uh, turn back on the electric hybrid power okay so now we've got to go back in the trunk here and uh, pull that lever here so the trunk can open now we can hook up the negative side of this battery okay we've got that good and tight now we're here it's for the hybrid battery now to slide this back in you have to take a screwdriver stick it in this hole and then this whole thing will slide back in okay everything's back together under the hood here okay now so got the check engine light on so have the check drive chain mesh we're going to come in here and go back in and uh, clear the code we're going to go to erase all system fault codes okay wait 10 seconds turn it off and back on now this scan tool it may or not be able to to clear that check drive train message as it still has the starter code the only code left is the starter code timeout now after you place that auxiliary battery you need to come back in here and register the battery so we're going to go in here to special functions battery management you're going to register battery change so you're going to go in here keep pushing enter tells you when the last replacement was it says batter this battery battery was registered successfully the following is now entered last battery replacement service function finished now I have driven about 30 miles the uh, triangle has gone away and now I do not have that message anymore guys no notifications at all so i didn't have to take it to the dealer spend thousands of dollars replace that auxiliary battery and now i notice that it actually starts when it goes from electric to gas it used to feel real rough when it starts. now it feels very smooth when it starts so the problem is fixed now i want to thank y'all for watching my video uh, it's Super Dave, and like and subscribe, share this with somebody, you may be able to help them out with their BMW, and I will see y'all on the next one. <music>